This is your Star Wars comic canon update. I have a really bad cold, so I apologize for everything in this entire video. The opinions expressed by the Roarist in this video is not the opinions of the Roarist who is not on heavy cold medication. So this is a canon update for Darth Vader issue number 24, Star Wars issue number 22, and Poe Dameron issue number 5. I'm going to start with Darth Vader issue number 24, and it is the second to last issue in this amazing series. Here's a refresher for what's going on, just in case you forgot. It is a time of rebuilding for the Empire. After the destruction of the Death Star, Darth Vader is atoning for his failure by destroying all who would oppose the Empire. The droids Triple Zero and BT have been sent to capture Vader's secret ally, Dr. Afra. But taking advantage of their programming, she changes their protocol to help her escape. Just as they are about to steal a ship to freedom, however, Afra comes up with a new plan which involves keeping Silo's men from capturing Emperor Palpatine. Meanwhile, Vader has tracked down the traitorous scientist Silo to end things once and for all. That is, until Silo reveals his secret weapon the kill switch that controls the Sith Lord's life-giving cybernetic suit. We begin issue number four with Silo's hand on Vader's suit, telling his men that Vader is no longer a problem, and then we get a look inside Vader's head, which is just really, really sad. First, we're taken to Mustafar, where Obi-Wan, just defeating Anakin, stands over him, yelling, You were the chosen one, and telling Anakin that he loved him. Anakin screams back, You're a liar and a coward. If you loved me, Obi-Wan, you would have killed me. Obi-Wan then walks back to Anakin, lifting him overhead and asking, You wanted this, Anakin? Would this have been better? While throwing him into the lava. Anakin sinks, but Vader then rises from the lava, declaring, Yes, it would have. For you. Obi-Wan repeats his line from A New Hope. If you strike me down, I will become more powerful than you can imagine. Vader kills him, stomping on his now empty clothing. I need not imagine being more powerful. I am more powerful with every step I take from you. As Vader walks away, the good left in him, Anakin, arrives yelling that he killed Obi-Wan. The two men begin a lightsaber battle, with Vader eventually getting the upper hand. Anakin on his knees asks how Vader could do this. Vader grabs Anakin, and throwing him into the lava, replies, You are a child. I am well accustomed to killing children. A dying Anakin cries that he hates Vader, but Vader walks away. Lastly, Vader sees a pregnant Padme who tells Annie to turn back and stay with her. Vader says no and chains form around him. Padme pleads with him that it can be over and to stay with her. She knows he wants to. Bowing his head, Vader instead force chokes her. Waking up, Vader then says, Anakin is dead. I killed him. He uses the force to stand up and a shock Dr. Silo says that this is impossible. Vader kills Dr. Silo, stating, Nothing is impossible with the Force. Silo then wakes up in his new body, Silo 6, and yelling, They have to go. Vader gets in his tie to find him and end him once and for all. And then lastly, we see Aphra in Emperor Palpatine's private chambers, saying there are things he needs to know. So this issue, like most of the Darth Vader issue, was really good, and going back to Vader inside his own head, take from that what you will, there is part of Vader that wishes Obi-Wan would have killed him. We also see Anakin is still alive in Vader, and that Luke was able to reach him in the end. Also, the I'm accustomed to killing children line was as cold as ever. So moving on to Poe Dameron issue number five, here's a refresher just in case you forgot what was going on in issue one through four. It is a time of uncertainty in the galaxy. Standing against the First Order is the Resistance, including Poe and his team of pilots, Black Squadron. General Leia Organa has tasked Poe to locate information vital to the survival of the Resistance, the location of Luke Skywalker. Their first mission revealed a new enemy, Agent Tyrix of the First Order Security Bureau, an awesome new villain. Poe and his team survive their first encounter with Tyrix, but the First Order officer vows to destroy them. Now, Poe and his team have arrived at Megalox Beta, a prison complex secured by the extreme high gravity of the planet's surface. The prison has no walls or guards. The prisoners make the rules, and all answer to Gracchus the Hut. Gracchus makes a deal with both Poe and Tyrix, Whichever one of them can get him out first, he will give special information to. The issue begins with the rest of Poe's squad seeing Tyrix leave after meeting with Gracchus. Despite the prisoners being outside the gates, 
none of the prisoners touch Tyrix as he leaves, something that amazes Poe's squad, as those prisoners were dying to rip them apart moments before. Next, Poe comes out and informs his squad Tyrix is the reason the guards bailed on them earlier. Tyrix paid them off. Wexley is concerned that Tyrix beating them to the prison, a destination only a few in the Resistance knew about, means there's a mole. Poe tells the squad that it is now a race to beat Tyrix into getting Gracchus out of prison. He signals BB-8 that Operation Upside is a go. BB-8 signals the other droids, and they begin their mission. When they run into trouble, the droids have to kick some prison guard ass. Afterwards, they give each other the most adorable salutes. Meanwhile, Tyrix isn't happy that Gracchus made a deal with Poe, which broke their deal. So he revises his plan. He reaches out to the three strongest, besides Gracchus, prisoners in Megalox, Canby, Papa Torin, and Aizen. He tells them that if they can help him kill Gracchus' guards, plus Poe and his squad, that Tyrix will extract the information he needs from a dying Gracchus, kill him, and then get the three of them out of prison. They happily agree. Tyrix seems to be putting his plan to kill Gracchus into motion as a prison riot begins with the prisoners trying to ram down the gates to Gracchus' home. The prison guards watch this happen, and instead of trying to stop the riot, they take bets on who will take over Gracchus' spot next as the prisoners break through Gracchus' gate. Gracchus retreats to his home, leaving Poe and his team to deal with the prisoners. At the same time, the droids run into some problems, and BB-8 is left. And it doesn't look good. Basically an issue just to ramp up the tension. I still love Tyrix. He is one of my favorite new villains that they introduced through the comics. And honestly, I would love some backstory on what he has done, especially for those prisoners to bow down to him and not try to hurt him in any way. I want to know what this guy is capable of and what he has done to command such respect or fear. Also, I want to see more unique Star Wars prisons. I never get enough of these designs. Lastly, Star Wars issue number 22, and here's a refresher. It is a time of renewed hope for the Rebel Alliance, as heroic Rebel soldiers strive to undermine Imperial forces throughout the galaxy. The Galactic Empire continues to dominate, and has doubled its efforts to eliminate and crush any who would stand against its rule. The fighting is as fierce as ever, the Rebellion is forced to contend with the ruthless might of the Empire and its elite Stormtrooper squad, led by the unrelenting Sergeant Creel. Even in the face of such overwhelming power, the Rebel spirit refuses to be broken. The Alliance puts its trust in its own heroes, Pilot Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and the smuggler-turned-soldier, Han Solo, believing that they can lead the way to victory. The issue opens with the rebel forces, including Han and Luke, ambushing a Star Destroyer. Han and Leia work together, and Leia manages to bomb the Star Destroyer and breach a section near their main engine reactor. The rebels fire at the breach, but despite that, there is no sign of a reactor overload. Luke takes matters into his own hands, switches off his targeting computer, and heads into the breach. He manages to head in, shoot the reactor, and it overloads. The Imperials realize they have seven minutes until complete reactor overload, and they tell their men to abandoned ship, which is exactly what the Rebels wanted. And those dirty Rebels begin to fire on the fleeing shuttles as Leia and Han head into the Star Destroyer and Luke, already in, secures the reactor. It appears the ship is lost and Lord Vader makes a call to the ship commander. Before the commander takes the call, he asks for a blaster. Luke, Leia, and Han are nowhere to be found except a week later when it turns out the Star Destroyer wasn't lost and that they are now in control of it. But instead of the crew of thousands the Imperials used to run the ship, they only have 200 Rebels. The art in this one was, eh, okay, Han and Leia looked really off to me. Luke was all right, but Han and Leia, there just was something off about them. I'm really excited about the Rebels having a Star Destroyer and what they do with it and how exactly they lose it, so I'm really, really looking forward to future issues in this series just because of that right now. I also like seeing the Imperials' reactions to every time they fail the Empire or the Emperor or Vader and how they're like, fuck this, I I'm not letting Vader kill me. I'm going out on my own terms. Peace out. So that was your Star Wars canon update. I will update again next week or this week, just in case this video comes out on a Sunday or Monday. And make sure you like this video, subscribe, and come back for more Star Wars videos, comic videos, Game of Thrones videos, anything sci-fi fantasy or horror related.